Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel Ray here and today I wanted to actually do something that's off schedule completely. So welcome. Uh, if you're new here, I am Rachel. I go by Rachel Ray on the internet and I do crafting on my channel. Um, today's video is going to be about diamond drill storage. Now I'm going to put a link up here uh, so that you can check out my previous video on how I store diamonds, but essentially I am changing that method. I'm going to sit down. So in the past, the way that I stored diamonds was in a binder, but unfortunately I have, or fortunately, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how you want to put it, but I've outgrown said system. So now I am trying a new system and I've, this is not my original idea at all. Uh, I saw this somewhere else, but I just wanted to share with you something that I'm giving a go and I'm just thought that I'd take you with me and you know, just hang out. It's Monday. Today is June 29th and <laughs> this is this is what I'm doing instead of filming an unboxing video. So essentially what I have here is a lidded box. The lid is actually under the binder. It's a really, this is actually kind of flimsy, but this is the best that I could do. If you can find a sturdy box, I would highly recommend you do that. In here I have the core of like a roll of cling film or saran wrap and I have attached it to the inside with the glue dots that I was using. Uh, I'm, I'm filming a part two for my epic diamond painting wax battle challenge and uh, this is one of the things that was recommended that I try uh, is glue dots and so I used some glue dots to fix it in there. It's not going anywhere uh, and that way I can have two two lines of drills. As you can see here, I'm using index cards uh, to write the DMC number at the top. And I'm just essentially transferring whatever diamonds I have saved into their section and then sliding it into place here. So it's pretty simple. I mean, I don't even know if a tutorial is necessary on this. Uh, but this will act as the tutorial and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just kind of cutting, uh, I think I cut that too far down. So I'm just gonna go like that. I'm just cutting my index cards like so, because I can't find them pre-cut. I'm sure that, you know, depending on where you are and, and what you have available to you, you might be able to find them pre-cut. I can't. But I, I've kind of done this and doing it in a way that makes sense to my brain. And then I go and write the numbers. So um, I am on number 612. And I think that honestly for me right now, from transferring from the binder into the system, I am doing three, I'm writing three rows at a time. So... The next row in my binder is 612, 613, and 632. Because DMC numbers aren't every number in a row. I don't know why. <laughs> I, do, I am the wrong person to ask. Um, and I have, see this, this is considered hoarding by some people's standards, but I have all of the toolbox, toolbox, you know, the toolkits that you get in your diamond painting. I keep all those plastic bags. Why? Because I hate throwing plastic away. I think plastic should be reused until it breaks down completely. 613 and then 632. So I'm, I'm kind of like that. Um, I already harbor quite a lot of guilt from uh, owning so much plastic. <laughs> this is my way of controlling that, those feelings, if you get me. 
X is 640, 642, and 644. Now, you'll notice that um, for a lot of these colors, I don't have the DMC for them, but I'm creating the card now because while you're doing all the hard work, just do all of it now. Save yourself the trouble later down the road because I know that I wouldn't go to this much trouble the next time I decided to open up this box. You know what I mean? That I, I kind of live by that principle. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, so, and then the last row is 645, 646, and 647. So those three are in a row. And 646. Have that one 647 I have a lot so as I'm going through I'm kind of pushing back the uh, the leaning I don't know what you want to call it <laughs> the stack okay oh and yeah I keep that closed someone mentioned to me at some point thank you uh, it could have been more than one person to tape shut the baseball card filing system. Again, if you want to check out what that looks like, have a look at that video that I linked up in the cards because I don't think I'm, it wasn't working for me. It could probably work for other people, but I, I just didn't really like it. If you're only, you know, storing like one package Okay, I need to cut more. If you're only um, storing one little sachet of drills for each color, then maybe that'll work for you. But to be completely honest, it just, it was getting too bulky. I couldn't zip the binder anymore. And that's the major reason why I'm moving to a new system. But also, um, the I can use this binder for all of my special diamond painting drills, which I'm really excited for because it means that I'll be able to see them. So all of the rhinestones and all of the special shaped diamonds are going to go in here. And then what the most asked question is, what do I do with my leftover diamonds aside from keeping them? Why do I keep them? Why don't I throw them away? Well, the first answer is obviously because it's very harmful to the environment to throw them away. And then secondly, um, if, if they are reusable, it, or if they are usable, like as in they are good quality or good enough quality to use again, then I'm going to keep them for future projects. Um, I know a lot of people probably wouldn't. Uh, maybe, maybe that's just like the weird crafter hoarder in me but there's just so much that you could do and seeing as I normally pre-COVID uh, teach English as a second language and a lot of the after school classes that I would run are arts and crafts based I can use them then as well so uh, and and it's a nice little momentum for the students to make a card with these special diamonds and stuff like that you know th the sky is the limit really with this Okay, the next ones are 648, 666, <laughs> and 676. So I hope you all are having a good day today. I'm having a pretty good day. I'm, I'm sorry that I don't have an unboxing for you today. Today has been really different. So lately I've been feeling it a little bit like I'm in a funk. Anybody else? Um, a bunch of you have noticed that I'm not my usual self. Um, I'm happy that people care about me enough that they can recognize that and I appreciate you. I really do and I want to give you a big hug. A big socially distant hug. <laughs> um, I'm going to be okay. It's going to be fine. I just had a rough couple weeks. You know what I mean? It's going to be okay. Um, and I think that's all right. <laughs> and it's okay to admit that and say that out loud. 
you know, um, if you're not having a no, you know, if you're not doing well, you need to talk to someone. You need to reach out to somebody, anybody, uh, if you need to talk to someone or, you know, just if you need to connect with somebody, you know, uh, we do, Mrs. Crochet and Coffee and I share a group on Facebook. It's called Crafters Anonymous with Mrs. Crochet and Coffee and Rachel Ray. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Um, one second, 677, 680, 699. So we share this group and on this group, in order to join the group, this is very important, please listen if you're not a part of the group. Um, it's a private group where we talk about crafting, all crafts. It doesn't have to be diamond painting only. However, there's, there's two very important things. One, if you want to be in the group, you must answer the questions, all of the questions, and you must agree to the rules of the group. There's a little, you, you answer your questions and scroll down and then you click a checkbox. If you don't do that, the system will automatically deny your entry. So if you're waiting to enter into the group, then please try again. It's possible that you may have missed the checkbox or something like that. Um, you know, it's very important. It is very important. We need, we have uh, over almost 6,000 members now. 700, 701, 702. Okay. Um, Something that's really important that I want to mention, I mean, for those of you who have been in the group for a while, you probably don't need to hear this, but it's a good reminder. We only have a few rules, but they're very important to us. Mrs. Crochet and Coffee and I are YouTube creators, and that group is a, was a place for us to share our videos with the people who follow our channels. That was the, the primary, you know, setup for the group. Have people who like our channels go to the group. We can have a conversation outside of YouTube, outside of YouTube comments, right? The group has evolved. So it's not just that anymore. But one of the staple rules of our group, and no, no one asked me to, to talk about this, but I feel like I should talk about it because it gets on my nerves, is... Um, that people feel that they, they can self-promote in the group. If you have a channel, if you have an Instagram, if you have a website, if you have an Etsy store, uh, anything like that, and you want to link to yourself or talk about your thing, what you're doing, you need to contact us first. Do not assume that you can just walk into any Facebook group and start self-promoting. It doesn't work that way. Um, Mrs. Coffee and I built our channels from the ground up and some of you have been with us the whole time and it's amazing, but it's a lot of hard work. And the group, the group's primary function is for our channel and for the people who follow our channels. Now, a lot of people have come in without knowing that we are YouTubers, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, considering it's a private group, it cannot be searched for unless, you know, you know the name of the group. Uh, and whatever you post in the group will not show anywhere else. No one, not your family, not your friends, nobody else, unless they're in the group too, will be able to see what you post there which is super important because sometimes people are working on, you know, customs, like presents for people. One second, let me just write the numbers. 703, uh, 704, ooh, these are pretty colors, and 712, sorry. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, lately, now, Really, this happened a few weeks ago, and I should have mentioned it, but I have brain fog and the memory of the mat, and I forget. Uh, but one of the things that happened recently were that people were um, posting things and insisting that it wasn't self-promotion, but um, if we think that it's self-promotion, it is, period. The post gets deleted, you will be warned 
and if you do it multiple times, you will be banned from the group. Another thing that's really important that I'm going to talk about right now, <laughs> which I haven't addressed and I haven't used my teacher voice for before, is that our group, hang on, let me write these numbers, 718, I know I keep making you wait, 720, 721. Our group is sponsored by Diamond Art Club. Sponsored, which means that they will have things like giveaways and contests. They will show sneak peeks. They get the advice of people in our group to help their company. But our group is not customer service. There's a big difference and I need, I need everybody to listen. I need everybody to listen. Crafters Anonymous with Mrs. Crochet and Coffee and Rachel Ray is not Diamond Art Club support. It's not really any kind of support as far as customer support. If you come into the group and you start making grandoise claims or start uh, insulting people or being rude about any company, not just Diamond Art Club, but specifically, most definitely not Diamond Art Club, we will take action. You will get warned. But if we feel that it's necessary, you may be kicked out of the group if you say things that are extremely rude and intolerable. Some people, I'm not naming names here, but some people have gotten really upset by our action to what, they, what they've said in our group. And... You know, my feeling is, here's, here's my thoughts. First of all, number one, the Facebook group that Mrs. Crochet and Coffee and I share is not customer support. If you need help with something, you need to contact customer support for that company. Would you like to get advice? Would you like to see what someone else's, uh, what their experience was? That's perfectly fine. But if you go in with the express, uh, with the express uh, feeling that you want to stir the pot or to cause drama or to say things in such a way that it can be construed that way by most people, I would advise you not to. Because you know how we feel about certain companies. I have been very forthwith with how I feel about certain companies. Are these the right numbers? Nope, I just did that. Whoops. <laughs> 722, 725, 726. I have been very forthcoming with my opinions and feelings on certain companies out there. Um, but Everybody has their own opinion. And you know what opinions are like. I don't have to say it on my channel, but you know what opinions are like, I hope. I hope you get what I'm trying to say here. Um, I might not like a certain company, but I can only recommend that you not purchase from them. I'm not going to tell you what you can and cannot do. You know what I mean? Um, is this enough? Is that gonna? But I think I think it's really rich when someone comes into the group, is very rude to uh, other members of the group and their opinion on things, consistently keeps being rude, and then gets upset at us when they're kicked out of the group. We are not customer service. We are people. You are, you are talking to a group of nearly 6,000 people. Someone is bound to get upset, but we need to act like adults, okay? If you think that what you are about to put online, on the internet, in general, not just in our group, but anywhere, if you think what you are gonna put online 
is going to offend someone, then you might want to double think about, you know, d just, just double check yourself what you're about to post because I, I did not start a group to babysit. Actually, I didn't start the group. Mrs. Coffee started the group, but I do not partake in a group to babysit. I hope that you understand what I mean. We're all adults. Check yourselves. If you're not an adult, then, you know, I can't blame you, but don't be upset if you you get kicked out of a group for something that you say 729 because different groups have different attitudes on different things and that's just the way that it is and if you don't like the way that things are run in my group with Mrs. Coffee you don't have to stay that's all I have to say about that okay let's move on so that's 728 so yeah, basically what I'm doing, if there's lots of different bags that I think are gonna go all which ways, then I'm putting them together in a bigger bag. So, yes, 729, I have a lot of these. Let me just double check. Okay, good, we're still recording. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm half expecting to get interrupted because, okay, let me move on to, you know, normal life stuff. Uh, this morning when I woke up, I don't normally drink fizzy drinks, but oh, they call soda fizzy drinks here. Isn't that cool? <laughs> um, yeah. So, what was I, I was, I just interrupted myself. This morning, yes. This morning, uh, when I woke up, I looked at my phone, because I was, I, you know. Basically, my, my morning routine is, wake up, pet Luna, because she's snuggled up next to my bottom, on the outside, of course, um, and... I then tell her to get off me and I go make some coffee and then I grab my knitting, my phone, my headphones, which are charging overnight. And by the time I grab all that stuff and put it in the bedroom, my coffee is ready to bring into the bedroom with me. And then I sit there and I watch YouTube videos or... Excuse me. I'll watch YouTube, catch up on YouTube. I'll catch up on emails and stuff like that. This morning I saw that I had a missed call, which is really unusual. I don't get phone calls. I don't do phone calls, you know. I have a missed phone call. I listen to my voicemail. You know who it was? It was Seal Rescue Ireland. They were asking me to help, uh, to help look at a seal that was nearby. It was literally right here. Like it was right down by the river, I think. And so I called them back and James had to go work today. Today, okay, sorry. Today is the first day of the restrictions being lifted for restaurants and bars. So today is a big deal, you guys. Today is a really big deal. Uh, my brother-in-law's restaurant opened today to the public as in like a sit down situation. Um, and so James is working for him for the next few weeks until one of his normal staff comes back, which is awesome because James is one of those people that needs to be working. He needs to be socializing. He needs to be talking to people who aren't just me <laughs> all day. All right, 7.30. 731, 732. Oh, and this came today. Check this out. Look, it's a JoJo's art hoodie, you guys. Um, I ordered this. He said that he had, um, this is a few months ago now, obviously, but um, he had partnered up with some, uh, you know, company 
And so I bought the King's Path uh, image. And yeah, I'm so excited. Anyway, okay. So that came in the mail today as well. Um, right. So I was like, okay, so you don't need me to be a volunteer. Um, you don't need me to be a volunteer to go take pictures of this, this thing. And they're like, no, uh, it's fine. We, someone's on their way. And I was like, cool. And then they go, could you be available for transport this afternoon if there's something wrong with the seal? And I hesitated for half a second and then realized, what an awesome opportunity. Yes. <laughs> 733, 734, 738. Um, so yeah, so I said yes, I agreed, and now I'm waiting, and that's why I was checking my phone, because if I get a phone call, uh, it interrupts the video, it kicks me out of the video, so I'm just going to stand up and check every once in a while. Cool. So wouldn't that be amazing if I could go save a seal today? If it needs it, I mean, obviously. See, the thing is, the thing is about seals as well is that they can get panicked and, and jump back in the water and, you know, that's a possibility. So who knows if they'll need me. 739, but 740, 741. Uh, but... I did get an email back from Melanie at Seal Rescue Ireland as well today, and she said that they are preparing the sign that says uh, Rachel Ray and Friends for the kennels. So you guys remember when, um, oh, never moment bag, a bag of bags. Um, remember when we raised the money? Now, this is just earlier this year, but it feels like a lifetime ago. We raised enough money to get a kennel at Seal Rescue Ireland and it, it'll it help sponsor the, whatchamacallit, oh my god, I can't get my words out, I'm so sorry. We raised enough money to sponsor a kennel. So all the costs associated with the kennel for a year was like 500 euro, I think, yeah. And so with that package, they put my name on the top and I told them I wanted and friends because y'all helped to raise most of that money, not me. Um, and they are going to let me come up and visit and I'm going to, um, I'm going to film the whole thing and everything. It's going to be great. It's going to be so much fun. So look forward to that. I don't know when that's going to happen, but the wheels are starting to turn again. Everyone's being optimistic because our country is finally getting opened again. I think we're on stage four. I think. If you're in Ireland and you know you follow this stuff more than I do, let me know. I kind of live in a bubble, y'all. I'm a little bit ashamed of that. 742, 743... 744. But at the same time, when you are clinically depressed and have clinical anxiety issues uh, and are taking medication for it, sometimes the everyday news is just too much. And I do feel that way quite often. Um, but there are some things that I have to talk about, you know, um, and some things that I feel very strongly about and that's not going to change um i have to stand up for injustice so uh let's see I've lost a few friends this week as well because of all that 745 746 740 Seven. Ooh, 745. I got quite a few of them. Um, but, ooh, that's sticky. Why is that sticky? Ugh. Okay, I don't like sticky bags. I draw the line at sticky. <laughs> um, these have been folded up in this bag for eons. I used to be very, um, 
OCD about it. There's some people out there who are really, really good at organizing and they organize all the time and very well. I go through spurts of organization. I get fed up with my own BS <laughs> and I have to, I have to just like take a day. And that's what today is about. I mean, honestly, this is the binder takes up what, uh, one foot by one and a half foot by two, two inches, right? Three inches. That's not a lot of space, but this project has been on my mind for so long that I just, today was the day. James is out of the house. I can talk as loud as I want. I don't have doors opening and closing and random podcasts that you can hear. 760. I love my husband and he means well. But he doesn't understand. <laughs> he he clearly just does not does not understand. And it's easier to talk when someone isn't in the house with you. It's not that what I'm saying is you know uh, fantastical or anything. It's just you know it's just more comfortable. Uh oh, it's more comfortable. Okay, all right, seven five four, and then we just pop it back in there. I'm trying to keep the drills closer to the outside, but we'll see. And there may be instances where I have to push down the index cards a little bit, but I think that's looking good. That's looking really good. I like it a lot. Now, a question that you might be wondering right now is, um, and I should have addressed this at the beginning. Uh, am I separating rounds and squares? No, I'm not separating rounds and squares right now. <laughs> That's just, I don't have that many. You know what I mean? I don't have that many. Um, there was a YouTuber back when I was first starting, or not even starting, when I first started watching vid videos on YouTube about diamond painting, there was someone who used to actually unkit Every, every diamond painting she got in the mail, she would just dump all the diamonds into one container uh, per DMC. So she'd have a massive jar of 154, for example, and she'd put all the round 154 in that one jar from every company. Didn't matter what company it was from as long as it was round and it was that color or near enough to that color, whoop, into the jar. And I was just like, oh my God. I couldn't, it messed with me. It messed with me. It just made my skin crawl. I don't know why. I don't know why I had such an extreme reaction, but I was just like, okay, you do you. <laughs> you do you over there. Um, seven, six, one, seven, six, two, seven, seven, two. And obviously, if you know, if you want to do these different, you don't have to follow everything I do. You know, you you find a system that works for you. If you don't, if you want to keep the diamond, okay. If you are questioning whether or not you should keep the diamonds, I really wish I had put this at the beginning. But if you're still with me, maybe maybe this will help you. Uh, one of the, one of the reasons that I keep the diamonds other than the environmental factor is that if somebody in the group goes, oh my God, I live in the UK or I live in Ireland or I live in Europe or I live in the States. It doesn't matter to me. I ran out of this color. I can go, hold on. I'll check my stash. Come in, look for the color, see if I have however many they need, or even if it's just a little, and then I can send it off in an envelope. That's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing with a lot of my round drills because I want to keep the squares. I'm thinking about doing, I'm thinking about doing the same kind of project that four kids at 147 has done where she has taken a heaven and earth design pattern. She's purchased a blank canvas and she is doing the diamond painting like you would do a cross stitch. It's not for everybody, but it's something I'm thinking about doing with my leftover diamonds.
All right, let me... Sorry. Woo! Seven, seven, five. Seven, seven, seven. Seven, seven, eight. As long as I can read it, I'm fine with it. Ah. So, yeah, if somebody was like, oh my god, I don't have enough 775, I could just stick these in an envelope. And there you go. It makes me feel good. There are a few other groups as well. Like, there's a group that I'm a part of called Got Diamonds UK. There's a US version and a UK version. I'm a part of that group, and it, it honestly, it does work. It's an exchange system. If you're doing a lot of diamond painting and you want to pay it forward a little bit, I mean, it doesn't cost much to send stamps. You know, you, you buy a stamp. For me, I think it's a Euro 79 or a Euro 95 or something like that. It's not too much. It's like two bucks, a little bit more, 250 for me to send out some diamonds. That's not bad. You know what I mean? And I feel like I've done something good. They're going to be able to use them. They're not going to be languishing in my house. And somebody's going to get some joy out of it. They'll be able to finish their painting. Hopefully. Hey guys, just a quick warning that there's just like a five second clip that is, it sounds horrible. I don't know what happened to the audio. I think my phone tried to sync with my Bluetooth for a second and then it went back. So just... Uh, hold your ears for about five seconds after this little black screen and we'll be back to normal. I'm so sorry guys. Some other news. I am starting to get ready to open my Etsy shop. I know that there are a lot of people out there who are excited to hear that, but I am still waiting on everything to kind of align. It might be another week or two. Um, I'll let you know. Goodness, that's a lot of 779. Anybody need some 779? Send me a message to my business page, not my personal page, please. Um, if, when I open my Etsy store back up, if you live in a country that is not in the EU or the US, uh, you may, how do I put this? If you live outside of the US or the EU or the UK, um, you have a chance, there is a chance that I may not be able to ship to you. But because the countries, there's, you know, certain restrictions still with certain companies or companies, certain countries, excuse me, if I cannot ship to your location, I will give you a full refund, 100% full refund. Right now, those countries are places like Thailand, Australia, I think France, maybe, I'm not sure. I went looking the other day just to see, you know, what was up and there are still some countries that are not allowing me to ship. So if, when I open my shop, if you get a full refund, I will obviously have a, a letter for you as well, just to say, I'm really sorry, I cannot ship to your location at this time. Um, and I will try to update the store and you all when that's available because things are still really uncertain right now. And the thing is, is that I, I really do want to open it back up. You know, it's, it's fun for me. I like it. 782, 783, 791. That's a big jump. I really like this store. I like, I like, uh, making the cover minders and I enjoy the whole process of of shipping out the parcels to everybody I like packing them and you know it just it just it's really fun 
So if I can start doing that again, it would be really, really nice. Um, seven ninety two, seven ninety three, seven ninety four. But I know that there are going to be some people who are disappointed because I won't be able to ship to their location. And all I can do is say that I'm really sorry. If I could ship everywhere, I would. But it has been six months, almost seven months since I have made a sale. And that money could be really useful right now in my in my personal life. I could I could use a little bit of money to uh, to help pay the bills and you know real life stuff. You know what I mean? Um, we are nearly out of debt, which is awesome. We don't have credit card debt, but we do have debt from our wedding. So getting that paid off this year is my priority. And then, you know, if we're able to travel again, I would love to travel. I'd love to get out of here, but that's low on the priority list. As far as, you know, the money part. I'd like to have some savings and, um, and get my loans paid off. I don't have credit cards, though. I refuse to get a credit card unless I'm in a in an actual emergency, you know what I mean? Um, but credit, credit has never been kind to me. So no, thank you. Also things run a little differently here than they do in the States. Uh, okay. So what was that? 792. Yeah, I did that. Okay. Next page. 796. 797. 798. These are the pretty blues. You see, are we still? Yep, we're still going. Okay. Look, it's like an impromptu whip and chat, y'all. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, is there other stuff that I meant to talk about? Oh, uh, Velasano is still going on. I am. I feel like I'm killing it. I'm I'm trying to stay ahead of the game, not allowing myself to fall behind. So I'm going to, once I hit 15 hours done for this week, I'm then going to focus on other projects because I am feeling a little bogged down. And I was talking to my patrons about that. If you don't know, um, Patreon, well, these are all Diamond Art Club bags now. Um, Patreon is a place where, I'll use them, who cares? You can see behind the scenes stuff. I have Patreon only videos and live streams. So tomorrow I'm going live for Patreon only uh, and, you know, stuff like that. They help support the channel. They get me, their contributions help me get equipment to make more videos. They help me with ideas for the channel and it's just, it's a really nice support group and they're really, really kind and they listen <laughs> and, and I really appreciate that. So you'll see all my patrons listed at the end of every video. It's one of the perks, but um, if, if you for some reason don't want your name there, just let me know, but um, 801. But anyway, I'm going live for them tomorrow and I was just telling them today, you know, there's there's a lot of really fun stuff coming up. I I am so excited. I can't tell you how excited. Um, so, where was I going with that? There was something I was gonna say and then I totally lost it, which is just like me. Um, but I do I do have some cool equipment on the way thanks to their, their support and um, yeah. Oh, right. So I wanted to talk about going live on a public live stream for everybody here on YouTube free uh, because I do get asked quite often, like, you know, do you have to pay to see lives at the at the minute? My public live streams are few and far between. I used to do it every week and I got burnout. 
going live is is a lot of work uh, when it was it was really easy and I don't want this to come off the wrong way y'all know that I mean this with the utmost sincerity and kindness it was a lot easier back in the day when we had like 50 people uh, talking at once <laughs> These days, when I go live, depending on what time it is, there could be like 200 plus people in there. And everyone's talking at the same time. It's hard for me to keep a single thought in my own head when no one else is talking at me <laughs> or trying to get my attention. So I, I hope you can understand how that must feel when you have 300 people, two, two 300 people in the room at once and everybody's talking at once. If somebody asks me a question, I can answer that question, but then I can't see their reply. You know, things like that. And it's all so fast. Sometimes it can get a little overwhelming, but I understand that y'all want to hang out with me live. And I will do that again. So I'm thinking about maybe after the 4th of July. The week after the 4th of July. For you all in the States, I'm going to try to make it probably around... 6 or 7 p.m. Irish time so that you all in the States can be there because you guys are the one, you, I shouldn't say guys, you all over there are probably the people who, who attend most of the lives, which is fine. Um, 8.03. And I want to make sure that, you know, everybody can come and not everybody's going to be able to come all the time. And I totally get that. And I understand everybody has a life. Um, but I would like, I would like to, to go live again publicly the first, well, technically the second week of July. So after the 4th of July, I will be scheduling that live about 24 hours before it is due to happen. Excuse me. It is seven. So just... You know, if you're if you're looking at your subscription feed and then you see uh, my name, it'll say, you know, Rachel Ray live, but it'll be grayed out because I haven't gone live yet. And it'll say scheduled for blah, blah time. And it gives you the time in your own time zone, which is really helpful. So it'll tell you when it is, what date it is and when it is in your time zone. Hello. Hello, Petal. How are you? Luna just came in to join us. Who are you, Petal? Hmm? Yeah, you wanna come lay down? Uh, Luna's doing really well. So we've been we've been going to the beach to swim. Yes. Hi. Say hello to the peoples. Yeah, good girl. Um oof. And you you smell salty. It doesn't matter. I thought I was going to get, I ordered dog shampoo and I thought it was going to be here by now. I have dog shampoo, but it's like this oatmeal shampoo because at one time her skin just, you know, it just didn't, there's something going on. And um, so I bought that shampoo and Luna's not a dog that has to be washed all the time. I would normally, you know, in the winter, she would get her, I call it her undercarriage, <laughs> um, her belly and her legs washed quite often because of mud, you know, but in the summer, there normally wouldn't be a reason for her to get bathed. But now that we're going swimming, I've made it a personal goal for us to go swimming every other day, um, every other day for the rest of the summer. Uh, so I'll tell you more. I'll tell you more in my whip and chat about what went on. But basically what I'm trying to say right now is that she she's a little bit smelly and I'm, I'm trying to um, deodorize her. So if if you are a pet owner who takes your dog swimming often, what shampoo or after smelly stuff do you use to help combat wet dog smell? Because <laughs> I, 
I love her and I don't care what she smells like, but my husband doesn't like the smell. And really, it, it can be a little much, you know what I mean? And I hope you understand that I'm doing this for her health. I'm not trying to uh, traumatize her or anything because I know she's not a water dog, but this is literally like the only thing that's gonna help her leg. So um, yeah, that's, that's just what that's about. And hopefully I'll see some improvement in a few weeks time. Ooh, this is one, 814 is one where I have a post-it note that says overflow, which means that I have a lot more of 814 in another place. So, yeah, it's really exciting. Um, we, we went to the beach yesterday, but like I said, I'll tell you all about that in the whipping chat because I, it was an adventure and it has to be told uh, well and for a longer period of time. And I'll be able to do that when I film that video for Wednesday, for the Whip and Chat Wednesday. 8.15, hi sweetie, what's up? I think it might be time, you guys, for us to W-A-L-K, 8.17. Um, and I should do that soon. Am I gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Um, so I hope, I hope that this, video has found you well. We have some interesting stuff going up this week. If I do get a random rescue call uh, later this afternoon, there may not be a video tomorrow uh, because if I don't have time to edit it, then uh, it may not be able to go up. Who, who knows? But if there's ever a time when I'm not able to post a video, I will let you know on the community tab just to say, hey, sorry. Uh, I can't, I can't do it today. Real life, real life calls. But I do appreciate that you guys are here and that you support the channel and you like what I do. And not just the channel, but me, you know? It means a lot to me that there are so many of you out there who, who spend time with me every week, who care about my life. That, it just seems, it boggles me. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. It's, it helps motivate me to keep going. You know what I mean? Um, and right now, well, not right now, but in the past, in the, in, in the past, in the bear, uh, that was very difficult for me, if you know what I mean. So I do appreciate it. Um, like I said last week, uh, there may not be as much diamond painting in the next few weeks, but I'm trying my hardest to get my little heart back into it because I know that you guys like seeing diamond painting. Um, and I'm going to attempt to, to finish this painting that's under my work uh, this week so that I have a finish and that I can hang it up. I would love to do that. Um, because it was a beautiful gift and I love it so much. It's so pretty. Um, and that's the idea. Ooh, okay, so 822, 823, which is a huge one, and 824. So I hope this video has helped you in some way. I actually have to cut off the tape. Hang on. And if it hasn't helped you craft-wise, because if you don't diamond paint or you, know, you don't plan on keeping your drills or whatever the case may be, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me in our little impromptu uh, work and chat. Um, organize and chat? I don't know. But it was fun to just sit down and chat with you guys without interruption <laughs> today. I hope you enjoyed it too. And... Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below um, or just join our, our Facebook group and one of the members will be happy to help you out and, you know, you will get a faster response if you go to Facebook uh, in the Crafters Anonymous group because, honestly, um, I don't have a lot of time these days to answer the comments, but I do try my very best to get them done often. So I appreciate it. I appreciate that 
you enjoy it and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day ahead and I will see you all tomorrow or Wednesday, depending on what adventure I go on today uh, and uh, in, the, in the next videos for sure. So take care and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.